about the scalpel? Are you looking at me, Dino? We're losing adrenaline now. Hello viewers, it seems that you can't open a newspaper, magazine or small door these days without hearing about the internet. Is it really an information superhighway or a sad cul-de-sac full of dull blokes trying to pretend sitting in front of your computer is cool? Well, today we're throwing off our humorous trousers in exchange for some serious journalistic ones as we feature an event called Is the Net Full of Cack? The test I've devised for this event is a simple one. Two contestants must nose around the net and find five things of interest before the end of the show. The person who comes up with the most interesting, original, or practical applications will walk away with the joystick. Surf's up! And trolling the net for us today, we have two blokes who know more than you, me, and that annoying ginger kid who lives down the road put together. We have Neil Ello from Internet Magazine and Gary Fenton from Net User. Neil, you're using a, an Apple Mac PowerBook instead of a PC. Why is that? Uh, mainly because I didn't want to have to lug a, a great big PC <laughs> in with me. And also, it's uh, set up for multimedia, really, so it's, it's easier. Uh -huh. And I also I have to ask you about your fine hair. <laughs> uh, I'm very envious of men who do have a lot of hair. How much conditioner do you need to use to get a hairstyle like that? Quite a lot, but it is compulsory on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Neil. Uh, Gary. Is the net all it's cracked up to be done, or is it just a lot of hype? No, it's not. It's, it's totally brilliant, and there's a lot more there than people believe. Okay, and uh, I believe, Gary, your father has the largest train set in the world. Yeah, and he's trying to sell it. If you're the only one that wants to oh, buy it. That's fantastic. You must be very proud. Oh, yeah. Okay, then. Right, guys, if you, uh, we've got to get this done by the end of the show, so if you'd like to get cracking now. Then, while our two cyber seekers log on, we're going to grab today's news firmly by the hand. Multiplayer arcade simulations like the Magic Edge system seen last week have been booming recently. Virtual World has just upgraded its Pacific Rim sites with Voyage to Atlantis. Employing hardware used by Soldier Boys, it allows up to eight players to play gaily around in an underwater virtual reality adventure. It's yet to be installed in Virtual World over here, but I'm not having you on. It will be soon. This Wii gadget is Silicon View, a handheld video player in development by NEC. Sound and images are stored on a small memory card which can only hold about four minutes of video just now, but NEC swear blind it will soon hold up to an hour. It's the size of a credit card, it has no moving parts, and you can even use it if you have a rampant facial hair, like that bloke lurking at the back. Walt Disney Pictures invites you into a world where toys come to life. Red alert! Andy is coming upstairs! Andy's coming, everybody! Back to your places! Hurry! Did you see my ears? Out of my way! Toy Story is the world's first entirely computer-generated movie. The plot revolves around two toys, Woody, voiced by nice guy Tom Hanks. Draw! Go! Got me again! And Buzz Lightyear, voiced by top lad Tim Allen. And the crazy mishaps that befall them when they accidentally stray into the real world. The so-called real world is also computer-generated, and with detail like this, it's no wonder it took animators three and a half years to complete without eating their tea. Andy. Toy Story is released in the States next week and opens here in March. Welcome back. We have Neil Ellall and Gary Fenton. They're hoping to find five interesting things each on the internet before the end of the show. Neil, what have you come up with so far? Uh, so far, the uh, trailers for Judge Dredd oh, at yeah. uh, Buena Vista in the US. I uh, just downloaded one of those. It's a rather large movie, but uh, it's usually quite worth it when you've downloaded them. If you've got uh, the time. How, how long does it take you then to download one of those? It could take you 45 minutes to an hour if you're dialing from home. But uh, obviously it's a bit faster because we have Vice Gen from here. Okay then, let's have a look at that. Fantastic. Okay, uh, Gary, what about you? What have you come up with so far? The NASA shuttle homepage. That sounds fascinating, Gary. Let's have a peep. Okay, everything you want to know about the space shuttle in graphic detail. Here's a link to the space station that they're building. 
Okay, this is a plan of it. So you can click on anything that tells you what each pod does on the space station. And here we've got a movie file. For people who like watching movies of space shows. Well, this is the space station a computer graphic image of it. Uh huh. Just playing there. It's all very smooth and everything, isn't it? It is, yeah. How powerful does your PC need to be to be able to run it that smoothly? Um, you're looking at sort of low end Pentiums. So a lot of money involved? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Guy. Thank you very much, Neil. I'll leave you to it. Keep on surfing that net. Uh, meanwhile, I'm feeling all tingly, generally all over. That can mean only one thing. It's about time for a celebrity challenge. So to find out what it is they'll be playing, let's go over to Old Bloke. I like to get dirty once in a while, and what better way to do it than on the classic arcade racer, Sega Rally. My contestants will be playing the two-player version of the game, which means we'll be swapping between their viewpoints to keep abreast of the action. The race will be conducted over two laps, with plenty of puddles, gravel, and mud to keep things interesting. As usual, the player first across the line gets the joystick. Gentlemen, start your engines. And here to play Sega Rally today, two of the finest and most physically attractive British blokes ever to sit in a motor, Johnny Herbert and Mark Blundell. Yeah! Okay, now, Mark, I know you've both had a brief practice on the game. How does it handle compared to a real car? Pretty good. It's pretty good. It's quite uh, realistic. Any problems you envisage? Yeah, Johnny. Because <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, me and the commentators, we like to have a little bit of bet, just a couple of smarties, you know, either side. It's pretty 50-50 easy, even money just now. Do you think you can take Johnny? I'm sure I can take him. <laughs> now, Johnny, um, you've been on Games Master before. You were very successful last time. Is that going to give you the edge over Mark, do you think? Um, I hope so, yeah. I think after our little, little battle then, I think it's going to be interesting. You're, sort of, you're almost playing at home. Actually. Yeah, more or less, yeah. Exactly. And the other thing is, I was thinking, Johnny, you're obviously you're a fantastic-looking bloke. I mean, Mark is quite good-looking, isn't it? But you're a fantastic-looking bloke. And I was thinking, it's a shame to hide that behind a helmet most of the time. Do you think should have a rule that the good-looking Formula One drivers don't wear a helmet? I think so. I think it would be fair, wouldn't it? I, think, I don't know. I'm not that good-looking. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously not. <laughs> OK, right. Coming up in part two, we're going to see if Johnny can take Mark. And perhaps, even more importantly, can our two net offers find anything interesting on there? Join us in a couple of minutes. Johnny Herbert, our two special guests today, about to fight it out on Sega Rally. My co commentator on this is our arcade expert, Derek Lynch from Funland. Derek, they're going to have Thank a you. choice of two cars. That's right. This. What's the difference between them? Well, it's a Lancia or a Toyota. Mm -hmm. And the, Lancia, the Toyota is far from the straights. Yep. And the Lancia is better on the corners. But I think they're going to go for the Toyota. Okay, so speed is the order That's of right, the day for them. Yeah. Any other tips you can give them, Derek? Yes, yeah, so they should watch out for the steering, not to oversteer, because mm -hmm. the cars are very sensitive. Yep. Yeah. And what about And to watch out for the slipstream, because if they're behind, and they get into the slipstream, they can take advantage and overtake. Okay, let's yeah. hope they bear Derek's words to mind. Okay, then, it's a two lap race. Whoever is in the lead at the end of the second lap will win the golden joystick. Best of luck, Mark. Best of luck, Johnny. Start your engines. We're going to get the count in a minute. They're both revving up a little bit. Three, two, one. one. Go. Off they go. We'll start with Mark Blundell's monitor. He is, in fact, in the lead. He's got the better start. Fantastic start. We can see Johnny in his rear view mirror there. Losing a little bit of ground. Let's swap to Johnny Herbert's monitor. We can see him behind. He's trying to get the right race and overtake him. Derek, what would you do if you were Johnny? You try and get into the slipstream straight behind him, and then on opportunity, try and slip down on the side. Okay. I think he's going to try and do that. He didn't get the inside. He's in the slipstream now. Now he's going for the inside. Johnny Herbert's going for the inside. Oh, Mark fights into him there. <laughs> Taking a leap out of Schumacher. So Johnny is still in second place. He's still in Johnny's bottom. He's in the slipstream. And again, he makes his move on the inside. Johnny Herbert. Okay, so Johnny's on, on the gravel now, so you have to watch out because the drift here is quite a lot. So you can see that Mark is catching up here. Okay, let's drift. go back to Mark's monitor. Indeed, Mark has caught up a little bit. He's in the slip, and he's moving out, but Johnny cuts him off as we come at the end of the first lap, and he's making net at the end of the first lap. <laughs> we're in the jumpy bit now. Now we're going to do another it's a sort of gentle right-hander there. Still Mark 
Carl in second. They go to the halfway checkpoint. We're halfway through the second lap. Another overtaking with the other bang into by Johnny Herbert. He's having an aggressive race, Derek. That's right. He's probably watching him in the mirror and blocking him out. Well, that's it, of course. If you can't see the guy behind in your mirror, if you keep them in the middle of the mirror, they're not going to be able to overtake exactly. you, are they, Derek? Yeah. Okay, so let's go back to Mark Spawner as he tries to uh, overtake him. Mark does it. Mark overtakes on the inside, but Johnny takes him back again. This is a fantastic race for Spawner with Mark. You can see Johnny Mark's trying to get the line. He goes for the inside. He does it. Mark over him. He loses it again on the ground. And he spins off. This could be Herbert's race, Derek. We're coming up to the finish of line. Now Mark is a last ditch ever on the inside. Johnny holds it. Johnny Herbert. I'm trying to get my, my voice back after that. What a challenge, Mark. You lost by one tenth of a second. That was all that was in it. Where did you lose that vital ten? Uh, I'm not sure. I think it might have been that first chicane, actually. I think where Johnny blocked me. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, I, I sent him in a draft. Yeah. yeah I could never recover. You are wearing a, slight, a slightly <laughs> heavier shirt than Johnny as well. Maybe that was the case. Yeah, Johnny's got a nice ladies' linen blouse. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mark. <laughs> and that was it. It was the added weight was slightly working against you at the end. Now, Johnny, obviously, you've won the British Grand Prix. How does that compare? To winning on this no contest this was absolutely fantastic and i think it's mainly down to the blouse that i've obviously got that far far ahead and got that extra tenth of a second that was it well it was certainly one of the tensest challenges i can ever remember on the show and the second games master golden joyce that he's won in his career was the johnny herbert <laughs> Now to see how our internet surfers are getting on. Okay, Gary, earlier on in the show, then you showed us the uh, space shuttle stuff, which was uh, technically very good, but personally speaking, I'm not into the space shuttle. Maybe that's just selfish, but it is my show. Have you got anything a bit more up my street this time, Gary? How about the shaman? I like the shaman. Good. This is Nemerton, their website. Everything you want to know, see, hear, and do about them. Here's some video clips from Shaman Pop Videos. Pretty exciting stuff, and you can choose any one of these they've already got. Uh, there we go. Now, why is this better than, say, just buying a Shaman video? Because you've got to pay for it, and here it's free. Apart from your, your uh, phone, phone lines. All right, um, this advantage here, it's small, um, slightly blocky, you don't get the whole track. Right. If you get stuff on this, you wouldn't be able to get anywhere else? Sometimes, um, Shaman would be doing some of their concerts almost live as they happen on the internet. Right. And also details if they're playing secret gigs, things like that, would you be able to get on this? Absolutely. Okay, well, you've, you're slightly rescuing yourself there, Gary. That was a good one. Now, Neil, uh, you gave us some Judge Dredd clips, uh, which was fine, but it is quite an old film. Anything more up-to-date, Neil? Well, one of, the, uh, one of the attractions of the internet is free software, free games. So I thought I'd have a look at what LucasArts are doing on their mm -hmm. site. Um, they're offering free software and demos and screenshots, um, but some of the demos are quite good and you can download them. And it gives, it's giving you a few uh, previews to what's happening with uh, Rebel Assault 2. Oh yes. So uh, that should be quite interesting. Again, I would say, what's different in this than, say, the uh, discs you would get on the front of a PC magazine that would have those things? Uh, nothing at all, apart from no. you can do it from home. Right, and you can pick and choose. And you can pick and choose. So, okay, yeah, right. not quite as convinced uh, by you one, Neil, but we're going to stop them now. They have been downloading other stuff throughout the show. We're going to stop Neil and Gary now while we compile all their clips together. We're going to go and have a look at today's reviews. First up, the sequel to the only platform game ever that was funny. Earthworm Jim 2 on the Mega Drive. OK, Earthworm Jim is back again. This time round, though, there are passwords to collect on the levels. You don't get them until you've completed a level, but at least you don't have to go all the way back to the start of the game. The levels are bigger. There's more to do on them, there's more puzzles to solve, and there's more sub-games to complete. Earthworm Jim 2 is full of variety, it's full of originality, and it's full of interest. With every level, you open a new can of worms. Try this and you'll be hooked. Sorry, I was miles away there. Uh, this is Rayman on the Saturn, and it's quite good. 
very, very original and very tricky. Rayman is definitely a next generation game. It's probably the hardest platform game available on the Saturn at the moment. The nice thing is there's a good learning curve as you go through the levels. They get tougher, but you're given special tricks and powers that enable you to beat up the baddies and get even further. It is a very good game. It lasts for absolutely ages and it looks like playing a cartoon. Tops. <laughs> Finally, the only chance of a British bloke or lady ever winning Wimbledon, Power Serve on the PlayStation. Power Serve looks like being the UK's first next generation tennis game, and there have been a lot of very good tennis games recently on the 16 bit market. So, Power Serve's got a lot to live up to. It has got some interesting features. For instance, it's got a two player split screen mode, and you can change the camera angles for each of the players playing. Also, the characters are very well detailed and they're very nicely rendered. Games have to stand up on their playability. And just because something is next generation doesn't mean you have to make it 3D and forget all about the gameplay. I think this is a very brave attempt, but it'll be surpassed very, very soon. At least I hope it will. Love. <laughs> We're here in Seattle for the World Doom Championships. It's very, very cold and there's a very naff stage thing going on behind me. Thankfully, we're not that concerned with that. What we are going to do is follow the progress of a couple of British guys who have taken part. 50,000 entrants have been whittled down to 24 finalists who've gathered here at the Windows 95 launch to decide who will quite literally win the competition. Standing between the Brits and victory, several unattractive Americans with funny names. Hoy man from the Dallas server. D-man, San Diego. Rage, Oakland. David McCandless, UK. I sat down with the guys before the competition to find out their life story, hopes, aspirations, and stuff. Well, I entered the uh, UK tournament with, the, but, you know, no big goals. Just went to have a laugh, and that's my attitude here as well. So, uh -huh. if it goes as well as it went then, I'll be the winner. Uh, I, I want to get through the first round. I want to get knocked out in the second round, and then I can have a drink. While the first matches got underway, I tried in vain to understand one thing David's opponent was talking about. He's the best down there. British is probably good, but I don't know. You won't beat the best American, though. Cocky git. Well, now it was time to see as Andre began his first round match against the sadly named Doom Dude. The guys play three five minute death matches in a kill the other bloke more times than he kills you type situation. After a slow start, Andre took first blood. The action was tense, and both players copied my chatting up ladies' techniques, hiding their emotions as they played. Seventeen. So ten, ten, ten. Ten on this guy. Okay. Andre. Yeah. Okay, mate. How did you do? Well, I won. Yeah. What was the score? Um, ten two, ten six, and two more. So you kicked American butt early, didn't you? Yeah. Downstairs, David wasn't looking quite as blasé as he had been, especially when his match was stopped midway through due to a technical problem. Why don't we, why don't, we're going to stop at the beginning of this, because there's no sound. I think we should start, we should do two again as well. I don't have sound on that either. Yeah. No, we had sound on that one. Oh, I didn't hear a <laughs> Easy, Tiger. Unfortunately, the Yank made the most of David's loss of composure, and before you could say, Americans are cheats, it was all over. Now, so, Michael, what happened? Well, um, I was 7-1 up in a game, getting back on a, on a score that I lost, and they declared the game null and void because he didn't have sound. What they failed to recognise is that I wasn't with the sound either. So, basically, we replayed the game. I didn't do as well second time, and basically, as you can see, I lost my heat. So the little American kid cheated, basically. But Mike has said, reckons you cheated. It's not cheating. I mean, if you started again, he had a fair chance of beating me again like that. You know? I didn't have a... It, everything was screwed up that time. Including your pathetic attempts to grow a moustache. All Britain's hopes of sticking one up, the Americans, now rested with Andre. But in round two, things were looking decidedly iffy. Hands up. 
Fifteen. Talk us through Andre. What happened there? Well, um, you know, it's not my usual settings, and it's a bit, it's a foreign country and all that. Yeah. It's a good player. Yeah. Wish him luck. Well, uh, well done anyway. Andre. Thanks. All the best. Thank all right. Thank you. Cheers. Uh, okay. So from now on, the game we're just played by Americans is a great British tradition. We have lost quite early on, so uh, basically we can skip now forward wide to the end. And the winner was an American bloke. And if it's any consolation, the bloke who beat Andre went on to win the whole tournament, and I bet he's never had a girlfriend in his life. Right, our Stuff in the Net experiment has finished. We've got all the sites that Gary Neal have managed to download. We've compiled them all onto the hard drive. Now, Neil, we've already had the Judge Dredd clips and... What about the stuff you from you? LucasArts. And the LucasArts, right, okay. We've got three more things from you, then. What have you got? Okay, well, I heard you're a big Kylie fan, so... I, I do like Kylie. I went out to see if I can as find some nice pictures. As long as she doesn't singing, I don't know. That's right. I just think, uh, I think this, this photo shows what some of the people on the internet are like. Top Kylie picture action there. Yeah. Now, uh, can, you, can you print this stuff out so you can print out in colour, put it on, on your wall or your ceiling or anything? Um, if that's what you wanted to do, of course uh -huh. you could. Okay. Um, I'll tell you how to do it later. Nothing wrong with it. Very healthy. Okay, what's your next one? Okay, well, um, one of my pet hates is football. I can't stand it, but there are a lot of people out there that actually like it. Like myself? Uh, the internet's a great way of uh, finding out what's going on. Um, this is a, a quite a new site that's gone out to show the Premier fixtures and results. Uh -huh. um, it also allows you to give some feedback. So you can give some feedback to the people that run the sites, tell them what you think is going right. on within football. So it's the equivalent of having an argument in the pub? It's exactly the same as having an argument in the pub. Only people don't know who you are, they don't need to know who you yeah, are. Yeah, and you don't get your head kicked in if they disagree. It, it's harder for them to keep your head in. Yeah. Okay, and finally then? I thought I'd take advantage of the ice down here again. Yep. And download a Bjork, a Bjork video. Um, and here it is. Quite small though, isn't it, on the screen? You can blow it up, but it goes slower. Okay. So in fact, that's not actually that impressive, I'd have to say. It's like watching a postage stamp moving. It is. Okay, well, uh, that's all your clips, Dale. Thank you very much. We'll go on to Gary's now. Now, Gary, we have already seen from you the uh, NASA Space Shuttle stuff, which is fascinating, if you like that kind of thing, and some stuff on the Shaman. Now, we've got three more clips from you. Okay, right. The first one is the X-Files official homepage. Oh, dear. I hate the X-Files. Everyone's really into it. I think it's all a bit kind of... It's slightly geeky, Gary, I think. And I don't think Scully's nearly as attractive as... I don't think so. You've got to be intelligent to appreciate the X-Files, Dom. OK. Was that a dig there, Gary? Uh, yes, it was. OK, fair enough. I'll let you have one. Thank you. Right. All the information you need to know about this and all the episodes that haven't yet been shown in the UK. Right. Keep us posted. OK, what else have you got? OK. MCA Universal. They have quite a big website. It's called mm -hmm. Cyberwalk. Um, Everything you want to know about Universal, their products, films, videos. Uh -huh. And here are the films that they've currently got out at the moment. So this is, this is very similar to Neil's Buena Vista page that you had the Judge Dredd trailer on? Yeah, yeah, kind of. Just like click on a, on a picture here uh -huh. and you see a movie so on it. So if you can't be bothered buying like a movie magazine, then this is great. Yeah. Otherwise it's, it's pretty Yeah, this is more pointless. up to date as well. Oh, it's more up to date. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. And finally you have? Okay. We have uh, Sony's PlayStation homepage. OK, and it lists all the different fighting games currently available mm -hmm. and forthcoming. Can you actually play them, though? Can you download them no. and play them on your PC? N almost, almost. Here's uh, Toshin Den. Uh, right, and let's see a little clip of that in action. Okay. It is running very, very smoothly. But like I say, you are just kind of watching it. It's like watching two cartoon characters have a fight, which is, I mean, it's great for the wild guy. It's, it, it's fine. Well, after seeing the five clips from each of our gentlemen, I would have to say I did like Gary's shaman clip, but uh, that was about all, I'm afraid. As far as Neil goes, I thought the football thing was quite a good idea if you want to have a chat with people. I liked the Bjork stuff. And generally, I thought Neil's was a much more kind of hip and trendy selection. So, the special uh, is the net full of cack. Games Master Golden Joystick goes to Neil. <laughs> is the internet full of cack? I would have to say I've seen very little today that I feel you couldn't get from a magazine though, but what do I know? I'm just a fantastically well-paid television celebrity. Right, that's just about it then for today's show. Just remember, life is like a Formula One Grand Prix motor race. It's fast, it's furious, it's exciting, but if you don't take frequent pit stops, Murray Walker will taunt you at the end. Bye-bye. <laughs>